Here comes Kyle Busch with a push from Boyer on the inside. Oh, oh no, no, to Benedetto. No. And everybody. Good oh, no. Are you kidding me? This is big. Wow. But it... Boy, it just remind, reminds me of the class. Same type of carnage that we saw where these cars were going everywhere. A lot of damage as they all got to turn three. Well, that ruined everything. I, I, I mean, sometimes, I, sometimes I'm speechless. I'm speechless. You know, there's just those feel-good stories that build in a race. And, boy, Matt DiBenedetto was doing such an amazing oh, job. Oh, man, I know he was. So let's go to the Goodyear blimp as drivers climb out or try to make their way back to pit road. <laughs> and look at the outside <laughs> lane, De Benedetto and Paul Menard. Yeah, Paul Menard giving a pretty nice push down the back straightaway to De Benedetto. Gets to his right rear. Oh, yeah, that just starts to turn him yep. a little bit. Got him in the right rear. And then he collects Menard. Yeah. Logano just misses it, but the whole outside lane and half the inside pile up. And this is exactly what we were just talking about. At this stage in the race, you can start to taste victory in the Daytona 500. You want to see that checkered flag, and you'll do anything to get it, and you know you've got to be more aggressive with those bump drafts. It looks exactly like the clash. I mean, those, all those cars, third turn, all those cars wadded up, sliding up the track with sparks flying. It looks so much like the clash. That is the 17th of February, looking way too much like the 4th of July. Amen. Fireworks everywhere. Yeah, and it really and truly, it was uh, Paul Menard. He gave to Benedetto a, a little shove, but it was on the outside, on the right side, and that just turned the, the, the Benedetto into the in the outside wall, and then it was on from and, there. And a, a different situation than we saw in the clash between Menard and with Jimmy Johnson, but it was a similar thing when we heard the spotter on the 21 Menard say, well, he zigged and we zagged. And in this case, Menard told his team on the radio, I just bumped him a little too hard. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? It's the end of the race. You're trying to help that guy. You're trying to help the Benedetto. You're not trying to wreck him, but uh, just bad bad judgment. Look at that oh. 10 car. Al Marola's number 10. Oh, look at David Reagan David underneath Reagan. the 10 of Al Marola. David Reagan, see what springs he's running. <laughs> look at that. All those sparks oh flying. Man. Amazing shots. And all Almirola wanted was a chance to win it on the last lap. Yeah. Well, didn't like quite, last year. Didn't quite get there. Close. And I got to believe our two leaders right now, Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, were really wanting and hoping to have another Toyota there and DiBenedetto to help them pull off this victory today. Going to be a little bit tougher for them to hold off those Fords, and some Chevys are moving up also. Amazing camera work by our Fox Sports crew. You're riding with Joey Logano. Get the Just one too many pushes there, Mike, is what I saw. Kyle Larson. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, here's Austin Dillon's view. Ouch. Martin Truex. Ooh. I was going to say, I'm not sure which list graphics is putting together the cars involved in the wreck or the cars that missed it. We'll find out when we come back. Huge pileup near the end of the Daytona 500. 